Well, typically a polling firm, or at least the way it used to be done, is uh, somebody would hire you to do a poll. A candidate would say, I'm running for office, and they'd offer you a check, and you would give them some poll results uh, for a wide variety of reasons, and partly because of the new technologies. We've gone in a different direction. We do all the polling on our own. Uh, we release the results on our website, and our business model is we make money by serving an audience. We sell advertising on the site sponsorships and subscriptions and so it's become a a totally different perspective and we remember all the time that people don't care about polls they care about the topics that we poll about um, and that's how you end up building an audience and we were really pleased this last in the second half of 2009 we passed Gallup uh, to become the most searched for polling firm on Google What did you offer that they, that they did not? First thing that we offer that they did not was we offered daily polling. Okay. Uh, nobody else did that. Um, so in, in the internet era, as everybody knows, content just gets consumed. Something, you need something new every day. And why didn't, why didn't they do it? First of all, Gallup was operating under the old model. Okay. They weren't seeing themselves, they were selling polls to CNN and CNN would then report them and there was uh, there were I don't, I don't know if there was a Gallup comment on this but when we started reporting consumer confidence every day the conference board issued a statement saying that nobody wants to know that much they just want to know it once a month well that may have been true in the 80s and the 70s and the 60s but it's not true in the 21st century uh, I'm convinced if we could update the president's approval every hour we would have an audience every hour of the day because people are you know, looking for information that fast. We then, we were the first to offer polls in all 50 states. It used to be they would only do the national polls in a few key states. Um, and over time, we began to build our own audience. Um, and one of the things that I didn't see clearly in the beginning, but our biggest asset early on was not the polls. You have to have the credibility and they have to be reliable and you have to put them in context. But we had a direct relationship with our audience. People were coming to our website and signing up for our emails and, and writing questions directly to us. And, and by the way, when I say us, now we truly do have a company, but up until 2004, it was just me. Um, on election 2004, we ran these daily tracking polls. I posted them on Microsoft front page, and, uh, you know, and somehow it all still worked. And so you and your dad started ESPN. Right. We, which was uh, a story of doing everything wrong, but okay. getting the, the biggest thing right. Uh, and, and really, I'm looking at this room, and it's really hard to explain, but in 1978, you could only get one college football game a weekend on TV. Can you, and, can you imagine? This is, this is. And, and yeah, and, and the world is so different. You couldn't, uh, the, the March Madness, which we're about to come up, up upon, they only broadcast nationally the final game, and I used to play a consolation game. Uh, and in that environment, we were working for a hockey team, the New, Eng uh, New England Whalers, Whalers, right? They're now the Carolina Hurricanes. Uh, great experience, but we couldn't get the Whalers on TV. We tried all kinds of things. We heard about this new technology called cable TV. Connecticut was the last state in the union to get cable. And um, we went and had this meeting of Connecticut cable operators, and we told them, we have this phenomenal idea for a sports network. We're going to bring you Connecticut, University of Connecticut basketball, New England Whalers hockey, and Bristol Red Sox baseball. And that was the entire package. And, you know, you have to understand in those days, Madison Square Garden Sports only showed 115 events and then they turned off. Well, we got laughed out of the room. Uh, nobody wanted to buy our idea. 
They told us about the satellite, and we learned that we could send a signal around America via satellite for less money than it used to cost to send the same signal around the state of Connecticut. So instantly, we knew we had a distribution technology that could change things. Didn't know what to do with it. We talked for another two months, and uh, I can tell you the exact date. It was my sister's 16th birthday, uh, August 16th, 1978. My dad and I decided to take a day off from the business because it wasn't going very well. Uh, my sister was working at the Jersey Shore as a waitress, staying with my grandparents. We drove down to see her. We argued the whole way. And at one point in a traffic jam in Waterbury, I said, you know, I don't care what you do. Show football all weekend. See if I care. And instead of yelling back at me, he said, that's it. Not football, but sports all weekend long. And uh, an hour later, we came up with all sports all day, every day. Twelve and a half months later, we had raised $100 million from Getty Oil to get it started. We had uh, signed the contract with the NCAA to make that happen. And we even signed Anheuser-Busch to the largest advertising contract in cable history. And on September 7th, 1979, uh, went on the air. And every five years since then, somebody calls and asks what it was like in the old days.